Hello. No, I didn't get dressed up especially for this occasion. This is just my Monday ball gown. I wear it because of how it makes me feel. When I first started dressing up for everyday outings, I didn't expect the amount of interaction that my outfits would prompt from strangers. The number one question that I get asked is, are you going to a wedding? Followed by, you look wonderful. I get lots of nods, smiles, waves, sometimes even car honks when I walk around looking as I do. I dress this way for myself. But sometimes people tell me that it makes them feel happy too. As I began to notice and explore the reactions that other people had to my outfits, I came to realize that fashion is a type of visual language. The clothing that we wear tells the world how we want to be seen. This works for me. I guess I want to be seen as an eccentric attention seeker, but it also works for children, particularly trans children. We live in a gendered society at the moment, with everything from clothes to toys being heavily segregated by gender. Gender is something that we all have and we all identify with, but it's also something that, for most of us, is given to us by someone else. I'd like to ask you all a question. How old were you when you first realized what gender you were? How we know what gender we are isn't a question that's asked much. But what most of us are very certain of is how we want the world to experience us and our gender. Some people even get offended if they're mistaken for being the wrong gender. Even if it's something that we don't think about much, as adults, we know the importance of being seen as our preferred gender. Children are no different. They want to fit in, and they want to be experienced by the world in an authentic way. If you're a child who is trans and you're four or five, it makes sense that you want the world to see you as you see you. Children of this age don't have the nuance of language to express their transness in subtle ways, so they do so through their appearance. When my daughter first told me, aged five, that she wasn't the boy I thought she was, but she was in fact a girl, the first thing she asked for was a dress. At the time, I didn't think much of her announcement. I, I told her, yeah, no problem, we can get you a dress. Her eyes lit up. Now, she asked. It was night time and the shops were closed. I had a floral sheet at the house that I cut up and I hand sewed her a dress. It took me four hours to make. I am not a very good sewer. But I did it because I could see how much it meant to her. When she put that dress on, her shoulders dropped. She looked at ease, comfortable and content. She looked different. She asked if she could grow her hair, and she chose a new name for herself, a girl name. By doing these things, my daughter wasn't trying to reinforce gendered stereotypes about femininity or how girls should look. She was just using the coded language of fashion that already exists. What was most important to her was that the world saw her as she saw herself. Knowing how important it was to my daughter that she be seen as a girl, each time we went out in public, I was on tenterhooks. One day in a charity shop, my daughter saw a dress that she liked on the rack and she pulled it out and held it against herself. The man in the shop looked her up and down and laughed rudely. Her face crumpled. She put the dress back and she asked if we could leave. My little girl was crushed. She stood outside the shop crying. I was livid. A grown man making fun of a small child and her obvious joy in a dress. Why did he think he could treat her this way? Was it because he thought that she was a boy and that boys shouldn't wear dresses? Up until 100 years ago, boys wearing dresses was the norm. When we think of gendered stereotypes like pink for girls and blue for boys, we often make the mistake of thinking that these ideas are ancient. When around 100 years ago, blue was considered a feminine color, 
and pink, manly and strong. My daughter was just trying to get the world to see her as a girl. Because of everything she had experienced in our society, in her head, pink and dresses meant girl. So she chose to use this language of clothing to tell the world how to treat her. The only problem is, in those early days, before she grew her hair, she often didn't get the response she hoped for. While my outlandish outfits were provoking delight in strangers, my small child wearing dresses was provoking cruel comments, mean laughter and rude stares. Going out with my daughter forced me to become hyper-aware of the expectations that other people have around gender and appearance. I came face-to-face -face with my own cisgender privilege. Cisgender, or cis, is the name given for people who identify with the gender that other people assign them at birth. I am a cisgender person. Being cis carries a lot of privilege. Like, when I go out, I just put on a dress that makes me feel good. I've never felt terrified putting on a dress, wondering if I will pass enough not to be abused, beaten, or in some cases, killed. For trans women, wearing a dress can be a matter of life and death. The stakes for trans people, particularly trans women and girls, are so much higher than they are for cis people. It's a really frightening thing, being the parent of a trans child. The world can be a very unfriendly place when you're trans. A 2016 study by the University of Greenwich found that 83% of trans youth in England had experienced verbal abuse, and more than a third had experienced physical assault. And why? Why are trans people treated so badly by society? In my daughter's case, it seemed to be because people saw her as a boy wearing girls' clothing, and they felt this justified, being openly mean to her. And this, this is the bit that I really struggle with. I, mean, I get that each of us places importance on our own gender identity, but I do not understand why we feel the need for others to perform gender in certain ways for us. I find it startling that people care more about being able to publicly express their displeasure than they care for the feelings of a five-year-old child. There is no guidebook on how to raise a child who is trans. Who estimate that there are 25 million trans people in the world? All of them were children at some point. Some still are. And yet there is very little information about trans children or how to parent them. We do know from research on trans kids that children who are supported in their gender identity have better outcomes. A 2020 study published in the Journal of Counseling Psychology found that parents who do not support their child's gender identity contribute to a range of adverse issues, from depression to suicidal ideation, while supportive parental behavior increases trans children's well-being. Luckily, for most of us, Loving and supporting our children is not a big ask. I'm now several years into knowingly parenting a trans child, and I've noticed something interesting. Once my daughter grew her hair longer and was accepted by her peers as a girl, she suddenly stopped wanting to wear pink and dresses all the time. It was almost as if, after being accepted in her gender identity, she could relax out of performing girlness and embrace her own sense of style, one that was as unique as she is. Clothing 
is a language of expression. And being brave enough to express yourself in public is an act of incredible vulnerability. So I'm going to leave you with a request. The next time that you're out in public and you see someone who is wearing something that you find strange or different, please think of my daughter and consider taking a moment to honor that beautiful demonstration of self-expression and vulnerability. Thank you.